like a stuffed animal that shows on the camera? Yeah, yeah, we're, because there's nothing on the field right now. Okay. We'll switch in. We so, know yeah, yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, okay. So we are, we are live now? Or? I think now we are live, huh? Yeah, they said we are. Bala. Bala. Bala? Okay, yes, yes. You're from, are you Norwegian? <laughs> I'm from India, but I live in Germany. In Hamburg. Hamburg is it like uh, west, central west of Germany? North, just on the border of Denmark. Okay. That's how you say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think they can hear everything. So it's just... All right, I think the games are starting now, and uh, there's a Smork and Bala signing in. Let's see how it goes. It's on one side you have the pancake in red, on the right, and on the other side it's Ekeberg in blue. Paul 
swinging along. Give and go, and Pancake makes a point. Like they're not just like they're very good in the like their technique, but they also put a lot of effort into it. It's very nice. Like yeah, and they always they try to break, and they understand each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah they cuts and it's flowing like water. <laughs> Let's see how Ekberg comes back on their offense. I'll be back, just maybe. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ekberg is discussing about their offense strategy. The disc is being pulled. It's a great pull when you're forcing towards the line and you want to force the disc on the pull right. Oh, that's a great catch from Magnus. It's a small push pass and it's a point. Going back to the pull, I think it's a really great pull because when you want to force towards home, towards the line, the pull was landing exactly at the corner point and you cannot get the pull any better than that. But still, Ekeberg managed to get it through. It was a great catch by Magnus and layoff for the point. Next point, the pulling, pulling takes place. Throw it, takes the pull. And a swing towards the line. Oh, that's a break. That's a break and a great catch. Give and go. Paul catches it, looking for the swing immediately. That's a knife. Almost at the third and Pancake makes a point. I think Ekeberg had a really great defensive positions, but Pancake still managed to break with their knife throws. <laughs> yeah, so the next point, Marcel. Marcel. Bitte einsiege. Bitte einsiege, der andere ist jetzt einfach weg, ja? Ja, der hat keinen Bock. Willst du mitmachen? Komm, los. Einfach diskutieren. Okay, Magnus takes uh, the break point, comes up to the line. Looks for the break swing. Oh, he's being covered pretty well there, but still managed to dispatch it. And oh, that was oh. a great defense from Pancake. Was it a foul though? No. I don't no think calls. so. I think I think he had it clearly. Yeah. And there was no foul call as well. So. Oh, that's a deep throw, almost flying outside. A little bit less power and more floatiness would have had it. Floatiness. I like that <laughs> word. Float on the on the disc. Lift, maybe? A lift, yeah, a little bit air time. Trying to swing. Oh, that was a low flick towards the break. Number 10 is pretty much caught up on the line. And oh, that's an that's overhead break. Yep. Got it. Oh, oh nice that was a pretty was sharp there. knife there. I feel like the game is going to go to Universal <laughs> at this point. Yeah, it's pretty intense so far. It is. None of the, neither of the teams wants to give up. They are all fired up, wants to get the disc so much. Also both uh, pretty strong teams. I mean, if you're looking at the points so far, both have uh, scored very well during the last games. Yeah. Are they both, uh, both from Oslo? Help me out with the Norwegian ultimate a bit. Uh, I think they are, yeah? I'm not sure. 
can also imagine that some viewers of this stream or even uh, if it gets uploaded to video will appreciate that the comment is in English for once. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I usually do because I don't understand Norwegian. Okay, there's another break call there. So when the disc flies out of bounds on the pole, the player is allowed to call break, break and come up to the cross that's like roughly one and a half to two meters from the zone line. Give and go, give and go. Oh, there seems, seems to be some kind of a discussion. I think it's an injury call. Uh, yeah, he needs to tie his shoes. Ah. Doesn't he? No? He doesn't want I to? I think that's what he wants to discuss, but you cannot tie your shoes if there is no stoppage. Yeah, you can call equipment, isn't it? Is it? Something along those lines, yeah. I think you can call it. Oh, that's a sharp, oh, that's sharp break overhead, but still Magnus managed to catch it, oh, and oh. there was a drop. The game goes on so fast. A quick break overhead, Magnus just jumped in, caught it immediately, and put it on to Sitara. Sitara tried to flick it, but too sharp for the receiver. Great catch. Two people offering, goes in the middle. There's a dump behind, Paul gets it. How did you get the names so fast? <laughs> I know these guys. Oh, Paul oh. throws it onto the side screen. Unfortunately, it has to come back and it's a turn. What I really like about both the teams are, is when they catch the disc, they don't really just stand and look for the cutters, but really fake, mm. try to fake the marker out. Yeah, they really know their shit. <laughs> okay, so Magnus starts when we're at the point where it met the screen and there's a upline cut from both sides. Doesn't get it through. Oh, that was a great defense. defense yes. But I think Sitara calls a foul because on defense they, she made probably a physical contact and it's accepted. Defense. Rescue. Nice yeah. rescue, definitely. Defense and a rescue. And wow, that's, that's a score. Good. That's low on the knees, low throw inside. That's how it works at the zone. Everyone celebrating it. Obviously, it's a great throw and a great point for Ekberg. So, Bala, are you rooting for anyone? <laughs> Why do you want to discuss this here now? Well, I don't know, because uh, there's I think, nothing happening right now. So. <laughs> I think we should think about the party already, huh? Oh, yeah. Let's see, our team is uh, it's relaxing there. It doesn't look like they're warming up. Yeah, our team was calling us for a warm up. Uh, no, I think we have important, more important job to do here, right? Uh, there's next point, pull. It's the... I think they are playing ISO, and some Froda gets it in the middle. The disc stays in the middle. Abra swings it to the side. Oh, that's Ooh. a great bit, but still. The disc was a bit too fast and a bit too far away. Again inside. That's the advantage with tall guys who are strong with the throws. You can always get it on the break side. Oh which doesn't work this time. Foul call, yeah. Foul call. So the thrower says he was blocked by the defender physically before the disc was released. And now they have to discuss it. it seems like there is a, is a contested foul, so uh, and let's this, see how this turns out. This is what I like about Ultimate, that there's always room for a respectful discussion. Yeah. Obviously not taking too long, but it needs to be discussed out, that both are on the same page. So the captain steps in. Both the captains step in, or the closest one step in, because it's taking a bit too long. And now they decided on the contest, which means that this goes back to the thrower. Making 
making sure that everyone's ready to play before they continue the game. Yes, that is very important. Oh, that's a high release. Oh, oh it was a great hustle from both players. Just was too high and went out of bounds. Nobody's blocking Frodo, he's flowing freely. And there's a cut from Ibra. Defender is too close. Swings it back to the middle. Upline cut, which is not working out because Ole on the defense. And really that's close. a hammer. Oh, Paul wanted to catch it with one hand. Would have been an amazing one. Yeah. But even for his height, it didn't work out. Didn't work. I think it's a great matchup between Paul and uh, Magnus in terms of height and skill. Yeah, definitely. They seem to match each other very equally. Mm. It's constantly sticking on him as well. Upline cut, upline cut, and great oh, defense. defense. Let's see yes. what's on that. No call, says the, says the offense, which is a great spirit. Swing towards so the back side. Very fast cut. Oh, that's, that was... I think Ibra is annoyed with himself with the throw because Magnus was holding on to Paul. It was a great setup up, up the line. Magnus still gets it on the line. Frodo says that he saw that the disc was caught out. It's sometimes not always easy to see whether it was in or not. Oftentimes people try to have one foot within the field while yeah, catching themselves on the other foot outside, it's still in. If the thrower has the first foot that touches the ground inside the zone, inside the field. So on the line is still out, right? Yeah, on the line is still out. So I think they've discussed whether it was on the line, it was uh, a turn. Yeah, and thrower retracts his call, so the game goes on. the hammer oh oh Frodo was almost there but I think he disturbed it enough to for... did he touch it though no he didn't it? he didn't make contact with the disc but it was good enough for Ola to be distracted and he dropped the disc good offline cut swing towards the backside on the break gets back the disc so there is a pick hole in the deep which means any of the defender, the one of the defender was blocked by either his own player or by the opponent, by mistake, of course. But you can also only call. Oh, oh very that's good a great luck. bid from Paul. Still, still, it was not enough. Do you know that Frodo, who threw, and Paul, who dived, are brothers? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> but yeah, now that you say, they kind of look a little bit alike. Oh, and end-to-end -end overhead from Magnus was floating all the way really slowly and perfectly. Yes, yeah, so Paul is, uh, I think, the younger brother of Frodo, and I'm not wrong, if I'm not wrong. And it's so complimenting to each other because Frodo always plays on the handling and Paul mostly plays on the cut. So right now Eckeberg is leading 4-2 to two against Pancake number one team. Pancake calls break, which means he's again up, allowed to come up to the small cross where the defender number 30 is actually waiting for him. Oh, that's a deep rope. Oh, that's... That's a backhand over the head, a high release. It didn't work though. 
I don't know his name, who ran for the disc, but he usually throws himself to the to catch anything, and he always gets it as well. But even for him, it's a bit too far. Ola, the lefty, gets the disc. Oh, that's a break. Really deep break on the knees. Sadly, they didn't make much use of it, though. They didn't really come forward with it. That's true. But they're taking it slow, which is better, I think. Oh, oh. oh even Magnus took it a bit too lethargically with one hand. <laughs> lethargically, really? <laughs> I think it, it's acceptable that when you're playing five games a day and the last game is a yeah, bit shaky, definitely, definitely. you tend to lose a bit of focus. You can really see the teams that have a lot of uh, substitute players that they remain a lot more energy in the last games. But this tournament has some teams that have only five players. Yeah. Oh, that's a really great nice. forehand, nice. forehand on the along the lines. It landed perfectly just over Sitara to the pancake player. So that name you don't don't know. I know some names I don't <laughs> know all the names. I am in the learning process. Yeah, sometimes they're just pancake players. Yeah. So this is actually my just my fourth ever tournament in Scandinavia. So still getting to know people. Yes, yeah, I'm here. Oh really? It's my, it's my third, I think. Oh wow. Yeah. Okay, so I've played more than you living in Germany than you living in Trondheim, huh? <laughs> I think yeah, I think I have played as much as as many tournaments in uh, Norway now than I have played in Germany. <laughs> In Germany, it was mainly fun tournaments. We have a lot of those. Yeah. So if you like Ultimate and you don't want to take it so serious and want to have more fun, go to Germany. And the parties are amazing. And the parties are amazing. But not to take away the, the importance of parties from Norway, we are looking forward to the party tonight. Sharp knife, and he spikes yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> he's super happy about it. It was a great cut, great throw. But if you notice uh, th one throw earlier, the marker was so good that the handler was almost stalled out. He was at seven, had to do a quick push pass, and then it went on to the, to the zone. Sorry for not getting the player names correctly, but usually there is a list of players, team team uh, team list for every team, but somehow these two teams are missing. <laughs> so Pancake is still leading 5-3. They are maintaining their two-point lead. Uh, it's not Pancake that is leading. Uh, sorry, sorry, Ekeberg. Ekeberg is leading. I'm sorry. Oh, that's a... Oh! Nice wow, one. that catch was great. Nice layout. So, if you can hear some audio, the whole stadium or everyone sitting around here is clapping for that because it was really a great catch. It was such a fast throw, it was a laser, deep and towards the corner. And this guy just went for it. I'm actually really impressed that you can uh, comment so fast on this game after four <laughs> games uh, playing yourself. I for myself getting a little tired now. Well, they offered really good food. So. Oh yeah, the food was amazing. Thank you, Ekeberg, for that. That was a great, great pull. Looking for the deep. Magnus is running deep. Frodo is running with them. Oh, Magnus. A little bit of an early jump this time. I think so. Magnus realizes that as well, that he probably misread it a bit. But Frodo almost gave it up on that. 
nice break. Sadly, no players behind him. And, and that's, oh, that's it. A great catch. Very nice catch. Got so much of positional awareness. She knew where she was standing. She was close to the line. Yeah, it was a very good example of what we were talking about earlier. She kept her foot inside, even though she stepped outside while catching it. During the contact, when she was catching it, she was still inside the field. So it counts as a score. And Pancake is back. They are not giving up today. So we've got nine more minutes to go. It's a tie at the moment. I think it's going to go down to the wire, almost universe, unless one of the teams loses a bit of focus. And that's a difference. So there are like three, four handlers. And a nice throw in the middle. One in the zone and he gets it. It's him again, the one that laid out for the last point. Him. I really love how the Norwegian ultimate is so uh, professionally organized in terms of for the, for the league games and so on with, with cameras and commentators and everything. Yes, we've seen that in uh, doing the Trondheim tournament on this as well. Exactly. Again, here in Ekeberg. And I think it's, it's high time that Ultimate Frisbee gets so much attention. It goes on YouTube and live streams and everything. Yeah, I mean, you can even spread it out a little along your family, like, hey, check out this video, I played in there. Exactly. And you want to see uh, how your daughter is making a proud mom? <laughs> oh, oh, that's nice defense, defense from Ekberg in the last third. Oh, oh, that's almost, that was so close, Frodo was almost there, but Magnus was quicker. Another thing I like about the uh, Norwegian Ultimate Society, I would call it, uh, that it's still not that big, so it's uh, pretty family-like. Many people know each other because they see each other like four times a year, five times a year at least, minimum. That is interesting because the German Ultimate community is so big that it's divided into zones. Usually, yeah. you know, northern teams know each other, western teams know each other and so on. But if I go from the north to the south, I do not know much. You Sometimes you meet such good players for the first time ever. Never heard about them before. Yeah. But here, yeah, every face I see here today, I have seen at least twice. And this is my third tournament mm -hmm. in Norway, so. Oh, in the process, I never noticed that Ekeberg is switching on to zone defense. So if you notice, there's one cup, uh, two, two cup, floating cup, two in the wing and one in the deep. And they're adapting to the tactics Speed. of Pancake. Yeah. So one is poaching, one is marking, but Pancake is drilling through the zone along the sides, of course. The defense is good in the middle, and it's a defense. It was a hasty throw. Magnus was waiting for it and caught on the line. Now Ekeberg has a position. Ola puts it on, and a defense again. Oh, this is really an intense game. I think the score is matching the performances of both teams very well. That is right. So back to square one. It was two throws earlier. In the middle again, was almost defended, but was not quick enough, and that's a quick backhand 
to be caught just behind the line. <laughs> it was quite the reaction. <laughs> so Pancake was two points down behind Ekeberg, and now they are leading by one point. If Ekeberg loses this offense right now, it's going to be tight. Just six minutes, uh, four minutes left, four and a half minutes left. They have to give everything. It's not even the finals. I know, I know, right? But it feels like it. Mm -hmm. It's quite tense. The pull is high and slow, which is exactly what you want, and the defenders are there at the handlers already. No knee backhand along the upline cut. Again, Sitaro runs into the zone and catches it outside, jumps inside. Which is a great point. Just along the line on the open side. It's wrong. It's not Sandra, right? Yeah, I think, I think her name is Sitara, if I'm not wrong. And maybe Sandra is the other girl. your team would want. If you were in the situation, Ekeberg got this point. So there's three minutes to go. Still a tie, like six minutes ago. It's getting more intense now. They're doing as well. No, they're doing oh. man mark. Back to man mark. Swing back on the break side. Swing on the break side is so dangerous that if you get it through, it opens up a lot of space for the handler. Paul is waiting on the deep side, but Ibra gets it along the line. Just is in the middle. Ibra is waiting for the deep cut, but too late. And there is another layout. Nice one. Wow. He goes into the lead. Everyone's giving 120%. Oh, yeah. You know, some teams you might have one or two people doing everything for the whole team. But that's not the case, definitely, in these teams. Yeah, they're rotating pretty good. Everyone's working for it, everyone's showing results, everyone's motivated to win. And the sideline is so active and so loud, which plays a huge role in every game. It's very nice if you have uh, players supporting you from the sideline, telling you on what to look out for, even just some motivational shouts, Yeah, and taking it slow. <laughs> And sometimes the work of or the contribution from sideline is so underestimated. Here. The game is almost over in 30 seconds. Looks like Pancake is leading by two points, which might end up in a win for Pancake. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching and keep looking out for the next game. Thank you.
matter. Uh, it does matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, bro. It does. <laughs> Fordi tiden har gått ut, så første laget som får 10 poeng vinner altså denne kampen. Oi, oi, Sandra til Karoline. Karoline ser etter muligheter. Der. Finner Kristobal. Jeg ser litt at folk begynner å bli litt slitne etter en lang dag. Men det kjempes. Finner Kristobal. Kampen over. Og vinner kampen for Pancake. Hvem er neste kampen nå med? Eller er vi ferdige for dagen? til den siste, dagens siste kamp på denne banen, som er eh, Trondheim Frisbeeklubb med sitt eh, første lag mot eh, du har kuttet 